Okay, Cam, I have something I need you to do. Great, I'm ready. But I haven't even told you what it is. Great, I'm ready. Kim, don't you want to know what it is first? I trust you. Oh, well that's really nice. I'm glad you trust me. Yep, you're a great friend. Aw, thanks Kim, you're so sweet. <laughs> great, thanks. Okay, well here's the deal. I promise that you won't get messy. Okay, great. And I promise that you won't get splashed with water. Okay, that's good. Mm hmm And I promise that you will get to share the big picture question. Oh, wow. That is great. That's it. That's what I was going to ask you. To share the big picture question. I don't mind if I do. The big picture question is, well, seems to be a lot of promises. Well, yeah. Promises are kind of show, you know, how God is faithful and how we can be faithful in our promises. So, just like me, I promised that you would not get messy. Which I didn't. And I promised that you would not get splashed with water. Which I didn't. And I promised that you would get to tell the big picture question. Which I did. Yes. And I promised that in today's story, we are going to learn about how God keeps his promise. Woohoohoo! <laughs> so good. Totally awesome. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Whatever the distance or darkness, you're with me. You're with me. Whenever I'm failing or falling, you've got me. You've got me.
When sin entered the world after Adam and Eve rebelled, God made an important promise. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. As years passed, God's people waited for him to keep his promise. God sometimes spoke to his people through prophets and prophetesses, men and women who received a message from God and then told it to the people. The prophet Isaiah shared a message about God's promise to send a rescuer. The rescuer would be called the Messiah, which means anointed one or chosen one. This is what Isaiah wrote. The people are living in darkness now, but they will see a great light. A light will shine on them. God will grow the nation and give the people joy. People will rejoice like they do at harvest time or after a war is won. This is how God will keep his promise. A child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. All these names tell us who Jesus is and the great things that he would do. Jesus was coming to earth to help people and to protect people. Jesus would be a king who cares about his people, and he would bring peace to the whole world. Isaiah also said, his kingdom will be full of his power and peace. The kingdom will grow and he will reign on the throne as the king. He will be a good, fair and loving king who reigns forever. God keeps his promises. He remembered his promise to send a rescuer and sent his son Jesus into the world as a baby. Jesus grew up and provided salvation for sinners by dying on the cross and rising from the dead. Hey there, friends. We have been talking about God's faithfulness, and I love that we know that we serve a God that is so faithful. And one of the ways that God shows his faithfulness to us is through his promises. Now think about it. Have you ever made a promise? Or has anybody ever made you a promise? I know that I have. My favorite kind of promises are pinky promises. Have you ever had a pinky promise with someone? I don't know, maybe, but I'm pretty sure that you've probably made a promise and I know that I have too. Think about this. Have you ever promised your mom and dad that you would behave at school, that you would obey everything that the teacher said and that you would just be the perfect student? But then that one time you may have spoken out of turn or disobeyed the teacher and you weren't able to go to recess and they let mom and dad know, mm, promise broken. Or remember that one time that maybe mom said, we'll stop for donuts on the way to school. But then your siblings were struggling to get their clothes on and get ready for school. And then mom's like, oh, I don't know. I don't think we have time to stop for school. I don't want you to be late. And you showed up to school and you didn't get a donut. That promise that she made was broken. No donuts. I love donuts, how about you? That's probably disappointed. disappointment when that promise gets broken. And let me tell you, I've made some promises too. Like, I promise my mom all the time that I'll make my bed. But it takes a lot of work to make your bed and I don't like it. So a few times I didn't make my bed and I broke my promise to my mom. You see, sometimes it's really hard to keep the promises that we make because we're not perfect. None of us are, not you, not me, not our parents, nobody. And it can be disappointing, but we serve a God that is perfect. And we know that we serve a God that makes promises. And in 
his word, the Bible, we know that it is full of his promises to us. And because it's perfect, we know that they can't be broken. Think about this being all of his promises to us, this big fat book. Let's try to break his promises. Mm. I even work out and I can't break this, but you know what? I have a super, super, super strong friend. Her name is Angela. Hey, Angela, can you come here for a second? Sure. Hey, Angela, so I'm talking to, the, talking to my friends today about not being able to break God's promises, but I just wanted to see if maybe you could try to, to break them. Oh, sh well, sure. Well, maybe, you know, I probably we just You're really it. strong. Come on, you can do like karate. Chop oh, it. yeah, I'll hold it. I'll okay. hold it for you. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Uh. Oh. Okay. Um, maybe. Uh. I don't think she's strong enough. I am so sorry, Angela. I don't think that it's her fault that she can't break them. I'm pretty sure that it's just because we serve a perfect God whose promises cannot be broken. And he even tells us that in the Bible that he won't break his promises. In 2 Corinthians 1.20 it says, For every one of God's promises is yes in him. Therefore, through him, we also say amen to the glory of God. So when God makes promises to us, we can trust them and we can know that he's gonna be faithful to keep them. And remember, he is the same yesterday. He's the same right now in this moment as we're talking about his promises. And he's gonna be the same tomorrow with keeping his promises. Isn't it so great that we can trust that God is a God who keeps his promises? Yes and amen. up the door when you ask he cares when you seek he's there when you knock 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 god opens up the door
All right, Angela. You know what? What? You kept your promise. You're a good friend. Well, thank you. And I love that we learned about how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Totally awesome. <laughs> and I think to close this out, we need to have a great friend handshake. Oh, a great friend handshake. Yeah. Okay. It means we're friends forever. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like that. I like that. Well, that's a good idea. Maybe it should go like, 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 bah, da, bah. oh, maybe just one hand. Or, right. bah, huh. Ah. Or like, or like, bum, bum, bum. Ah. Oh, gosh. Okay, maybe. Um, awesome. Yeah, but we'll keep working on it, okay? Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. see you later. Let's try it again. Okay, ready? Bum, 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 bum. Bum. But maybe like, bum. Bum.